Welcome everybody, Mike McConville here, Stratford, Ontario, Canada for Strength Tech Workstations. I have a 1921 Nick Lucas guitar. I want to kind of show you where we're going with this. There's a few braces that have let go. So I'm setting up to glue this brace. So, I've got so this is like green electrical tape, a plastic tape that I put on either side of the brace. We are heating up our hide glue. Now what I wanted to show you is I have a little jack that I've been using this type of jack for years and this is essentially what we've got. We've got a three quarter inch dowel with a compression spring in there and then a half inch dowel and on top we have this little v-shaped call. So what we have is we have the k-value of the compression spring. Nice gentle pressure to pull that broken brace tight without putting excessive force on the top of the guitar. It's like you're reaching in there and pushing that brace down and holding it. So the high glue is heated up. We're going to spread that high glue and then we'll slip this into place. So I'm trying my best with the camera to give you an idea of what I'm doing here. I have this plastic back ultra fine sandpaper. So I'm going to load up that joint with the high glue and then I can wipe it along the length of that crack and make sure that's good and saturated before we put that spring clamp in place. Okay, I'm liking that. We got that lined up perfectly, saturated, and, and I wiped up a couple of little dots of hide glue that had dripped onto the back. But I'm happy with that. We got that good and clean. We'll let that set for at least an hour or so, and then we'll move on to the next brace, which is much deeper in the lower bout. You can kind of see it there, lifting. So we'll get that one next, and as always, we give you play-by-play. -play. Cheers. So when this guitar first came in, there was a couple of sort of horrendous things that had been done. You can just sort of barely see that circle of rosewood. I put a plug in there and another one here. Somebody had drilled through the bridge, drilled through the top, and just happened to drill right through the center of the X-brace on both sides and bolted the bridge on. Uh. Anyway, uh, you can see I've kind of filled that in. Now luckily the X-Brace did not let go, even though there was a hole drilled right through the center of it. I am going to gently sort of sandwich that X-Brace with some quarter sawn Sitka spruce and that'll be just fine. That thing will hold no problem. These braces are ultra fine as you saw in that last clip. As I've mentioned in so many of those other videos, when you get into a guitar of this vintage, you know, multiple people will take runs at these instruments over the course of their lifetime. Some people do expert repairs, some people do pretty scary things. You, know, you can see, obviously, this top is sort of chewed up pretty good. There's lots of wear on there. Uh, there is a couple of cracks here and here they have been repaired. Someone at one time must have wicked some hide glue in there because they're solid. I can also tell that the bridge has been off and put back on but right now like that's holding beautifully so we're not going to mess with that. We will heat up this saddle like you've seen me do in other videos. These saddles are actually glued in with hide glue. Of course hide glue was the adhesive of the day. That's what people use to build instruments. Violins, guitars and everything else. So we're going to remove this. So we do have this piece of fingerboard binding is missing. These are the original frets by the way. And I think we're going to get away with using these. There is somewhere in there but I think we'll be able to dress them and use them. The neck to body angle is actually pretty darn good. And, like I mentioned in the other videos, yeah, you know, this has got a bit of a belly on it, but you don't go clamping it down. This is exactly what it should do. It's, it's lifting up in a beautiful spherical radius. You can see ahead of the bridge and across the sound hole, nothing's caving in. This thing is rock solid a hundred years down the road. We've got that script, the Gibson, Pearl uh, logo on there. That's, that's always impressive to see that. For a plantilla or a body perimeter that size, this is deeper than your typical dreadnought at the neck junction. It's like four and a half inches. So there's almost no taper at all from the upper bout to the lower bout. Now this is a 12th fret meets the body. The Nick Lucas was built with 12th fret meets the body, 13th fret meets the body, and 14th fret meets the body. So what happens with the 12th fret? When you have the 12th fret meeting the body, then that puts the bridge and the focal point on the saddle deeper into the lower bout. There's a lot of people that argue that 12th fret guitar is a 
you know, sort of fuller, richer sound. It's a combination of many things. The uh, And the bracing on this guitar, ultra thin bracing, high thin bracing, as you saw in that back brace we just glued. What I'm using here is a combination of those lead weights sort of gently set onto the brace and then the uh, spring clamp that you saw earlier holding that tip down tight. So I'm happy with that. We got that on there good and clean, rock solid. Okay, we're heating up that saddle that's been glued in with hide glue. I've got my little sort of cloth lightly dampened with water. So the steam and the heat will uh, loosen that up so we can get that out and uh, do some adjustments on the intonation. Oh, we got that saddle out super clean. No lumber, no chips. Very light stain on that bridge just to make those rosewood plugs disappear. But the amazing thing is, the X-Brace didn't actually let go. So I've opted to put a very thin Sitka spruce veneer on either side of where that brace was drilled through. We obviously have to be super cautious around this hundred year old finish uh, when you're using any type of tape or adhesive. So what I've done here is I've glued on that missing piece of binding but when I went to glue that into place you'll look you'll see that I've got the adhesive face to face so the only part that actually touched was the adhesive onto the plastic. But just to demonstrate, I use that little tiny bit, the depth of the binding, to kind of pull that over, and that's it. No danger of pulling any finish here. I did put that clamp on there to right. give that binding just a little bit of extra help. I've pressed that saddle back into place, no glue yet. Once that X brace has been completely reinforced, then we'll be ready to put some strings on and at that time we'll check the intonation on that saddle and adjust it ever so slightly and once we get that intonation where it needs to be then we'll mix up some high glue and glue that saddle back into place there's the man himself Nick Lucas smiling. so I'm just getting ready to take off that spring clamp we were gluing the brace that had let go on the top here so at this point all the loose braces have been glued. So this is what we ended up with filling in that missing chunk of fingerboard binding. It's obviously not a cosmetic match. When you're playing the guitar it's virtually undetectable. You don't feel anything on that left hand. We basically filled that void where the binding was missing. For a guitar that's a hundred years old, it's surprising there isn't more chunks of plastic falling off. Pretty remarkable shape, really. Even with all its war wounds and scratches, it actually is in a lot better shape than most guitars that would even make it this far. So we'll reach in and grab that little spring clamp and take that out. This is the one that you saw earlier. Well, here's the best shot that I can give you of that X brace that was drilled through. This is the base side through hole that was drilled through the X brace. Amazingly, it didn't let go. It's still solidly glued to the soundboard. Uh, we will restructure this without adding any excess weight. You know, there's all kinds of Gibson bashing going on these days. We have to remember in the big picture that over the last hundred years, uh, they have done a lot more things right than they've done wrong and I understand people being upset you know people have left comments saying they deserve to be bankrupt blah 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 but you know something here's a hundred year old Gibson guitar truss rod still works perfectly like the day it was made the top itself a couple of braces have let go like you saw earlier in the video all kinds of scratches and marks. Whenever you're working on an old instrument like this, when I taped that mask into place, I just went on to the actual plastic and then across the fingerboard I tucked the mask under the strap, under the leather strap, so there's no adhesive on the actual paint itself. You know, so when I covered up the inlays, same thing just stopped it at the plastic. I didn't wrap the tape down to the wood. Yeah. And just got to be extra careful. Can't stress that enough. Even the case is in not bad shape for a hundred years. 
I did remove that truss rod nut and put a little bit of oil on those threads and then put it back on. Frets have been leveled, recrowned, polished, buffed. They're like mint now. Other than these two cracks that have been actually glued and expertly done, I might add. Other than that, the top is mint. And a beautiful spherical radius. It's not caving in around the sound hole. I've seen brand new guitars before they even leave a store caving in around the sound hole on the bridge. Super solid and came out nice and clean. And that's it for this 1921 Nick Lucas Special. This compensated nut is cut, frets are dressed. A lot of people don't realize this, but Nick Lucas was the first Endor C for Gibson Guitars. And, uh, was quite a player and wrote instruction booklets, as well as having this guitar named after This him. is the final call. Compensated nut is done. I ended up settling on an 11 to 52 gauge string. Uh, it just uh, seemed to work best with the intonation the sound of the guitar, just enough load on the soundboard without overloading it. I managed to squeak out just enough action height out of that original saddle. So rule of thumb here is uh, if you don't need to do it, you don't. And in this case we got away without doing a neck reset and in fact if we were going to do anything uh, I would go with the higher fret on a refret to encourage a little bit more height at that saddle. But it doesn't need to be done. The thing plays beautifully now. I'm sure Lucas will be one happy camper. And that's it for the 1921 Nick Lucas. It's playing beautifully, perfectly in tune and nice and smooth for finger style, for single line stuff, for strumming, bass lines. Very versatile guitar. structured that body man is that thing ever light Whew, that's why it's got all that snap the action is great now uh, we had just enough I squeezed just enough action out of that original saddle to you know to set it up and play beautifully of course intonation is great compensated nut check on just the garden variety first position chords and then that C form
this is a 12th fret meets the body. That puts the bridge a little deeper into the lower bout. This is one of the reasons why you get uh, quite a bit more bass response. It's a very balanced tone, but no shortage of bass. Like, look at how thick that body is. This is thicker than a dreadnought is at the neck to body junction. In proportion to the body shape, this is very deep guitar. And this is mahogany, the whole thing's mahogany, back and sides, neck. And you look under string load, that top is not distorting or imploding or caving in around the sound hole. It's super stable. All of those interior braces now have been re-glued. So the structural integrity is completely restored, but just as importantly, now it plays super smooth. And of course, perfectly in tune. Cheers.